Are you trembling at the recent news about AI taking all your jobs and the massive layoffs at every large tech company? Some influencers are even saying the golden age of tech is gone. They'll tell you with layoffs and AI, there'll be no tech jobs for anyone. So don't even bother learning to code. Let me ease some fears. The tech sector is actually expanding, not contracting, and AI isn't going to replace developers in the foreseeable future. Your decision to try to break into coding is a good one because the same fundamentals of the tech sector still exist today. Don't believe me? The job outlook for development jobs over the next decade is exceptionally strong. The US will need to create 370,000 additional software jobs over the next 10 years. This makes software development the number one job in the US right now today. So really, the question you should ask is, not should I become a software developer? But how do I become a software developer? The first step to finding a developer job is learning to code. It may seem obvious, but coding skills are essential to get a developer job. But what's not obvious, before you start learning to code, you first need to focus on a particular developer job. Now ask yourself this question, what do I want to build? Do I want to build mobile apps, data science, games, desktop, web? If you have no idea, we suggest targeting web development. It's the most in-demand job in software development. Once you've picked a job, now you can figure out what to learn. The most common mistake people make is they don't have a job focus while learning. They take courses in anything, but never acquire the skills necessary to do a particular job. You don't need to learn nine programming languages, but only the languages necessary to get the job. Now, social media influencers will tell you, it doesn't matter what you learn, just learn something. I'm here to tell you it does matter what you learn. Companies hire for specific skills. If your skills don't match the job qualifications, you won't be considered for that role, especially if you're trying to land your first developer job. Now, the term we use for this is tech stack. You need to learn a tech stack that targets a specific type of job. For web development, you need to know five core languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL, and a server-side language like C-sharp. If you have no idea which tech stack to choose, we recommend ASP.NET. You will learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL, and C-sharp. ASP.NET is a web framework from Microsoft used by many companies, both large and small, to build web applications. After learning a tech stack, you need to build showcase projects that use the tech stack you have learned. Tech influencers or teachers will tell you, build any project you want. In fact, most courses have a capstone project where you decide what to build. Let's say build something fun, build something you're passionate about. It doesn't have to do anything special as long as you build something. In my opinion, this is the worst advice you could possibly get. You need to build projects that will resonate with the person you are interviewing with. The audience for the project is the interviewer, not you. And that's why Pokédex, Tic-Tac-Toe, and Snake Game are terrible project ideas for a showcase project. I call these toy projects, and they don't resonate with the person interviewing you. Now, you may ask yourself a question, well, if it's so bad, why do so many people recommend building them? Why is your advice the correct advice? First, I place and interview people for dev roles. I know what moves the needle during the interviews, and I can see firsthand what works and what doesn't with employers. Toy projects are not seen as quality projects by most interviewers. They don't resonate with them. Therefore, they don't see the skills used to build them will transfer to the job they're posting for. So the companies look at your work and pass you over for an interview. We call this the soft no. Or they interview you, but you lose out to other candidates with better showcase projects. And this is one of the main reasons people struggle to find roles. When I see someone say, I've applied to 500 positions with no job offer, I know there is a weakness in their portfolio. Simply put, the projects they built aren't good enough. Now, you can still make these toy projects, but you cannot have them as your showcase project. Second, the projects I recommend are hard to build, and many influencers and course creators don't possess the skill to build these projects, or they don't want to take the time to build them. So they recommend toy projects because they're easy to build and easy to teach. At Coder Finder, we don't do that. Why? Because they don't 
translate into job offers. Our advice is to build a project that resonates with that employer. This is your primary goal for a showcase project. It must resonate with that employer. So how do you build a showcase project? It must be stylish and intuitive. People are visual buyers. So if you want them to be impressed with your work, it must be attractive and easy to use. Second, it must solve a recognizable business problem. That means the project you choose to build must be immediately recognizable to the hiring manager. Why? Because you don't want to spend your time explaining the reason you believe Tinder for rock climbers is a good idea. You want to focus on how you built it, not its purpose. Also, if they think your idea is dumb, they may judge the idea more than the coder. And you want the focus to be on you as a coder. Third, it must use a database and implement security. It must have authentication and authorization. So users required to log in and is granted permissions based on that login. At Coder Founder, we teach you how to build applications that check all of these boxes. We recommend building a bug tracker. The hiring manager instantly recognizes what a bug tracker is supposed to do, and they won't focus on a confusing application idea. Instead, focus on how you built it, and it moves the needle during the interview process. To win a job, you must pass a technical interview. Now, this can be a very scary thing, but I want you to know while scary, it is something you can prep for. So study the top 30 interview questions for the stack you've learned. Learn the answers and relate those questions to the code base in your showcase project. For example, if someone asks you the difference between an object and a class in C-sharp, you could answer an object is an instance of a class. A class defines that object. Or a better way to answer is you could show them the classes in your C-sharp showcase project and how you instantiate them in your code. The demo not only shows you know the answer to the question, but also your ability to implement it. You need to practice common coding challenges with languages you have learned. Now, some interviews will require you to solve a coding challenge during the interview process. And typically they're pulled from sites like leak code or hacker rank. I suggest practicing solving challenges on these sites, but don't spend a lot of time. Spend some time doing the challenges, but maybe less than 20% of your time. Spend the majority of your time studying technical questions, relating them to your code and practice demoing that showcase project. So while the current headlines may be scary, don't worry, coding skills will still be in demand for the foreseeable future. Don't listen to the alarmist naysayers. You can still be a developer and the opportunities are abundant. I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.